Like most things, going climbing for the first time can be pretty scary, and if you don't know what you're doing, it's easy to feel like you're a beginner when you first step into the gym. In this video, I go over the tips and tricks that I've learned through five years in the sport to help you guys feel more comfortable the first time that you go climbing. What's up guys, I'm Marcus, this is Ascensionism, and in this video I'm going to be talking about just kind of my tips and some overviews, stuff I think you should know for the first time you go climbing so that you don't have to feel self-conscious or out of place when you first go to the climbing gym. Now I know that this can kind of be a big thing for first climbers, it's a bit of like a niche sport and it kind of has its own language, its own tools, some stuff you're really unfamiliar with, so it can be kind of scary to step into that world for the first time. Once you get over that hump though, climbing is a super fun activity, I would recommend that everyone do it, I obviously love it. And so I'm making this video just to help other people kind of get past that initial fright and really get into the sport. So first of all, I thought it would be good to start with a bit of an overview of really what climbing is. At its base, the sport is just kind of like a game where you try to get from the bottom of a wall to the top of a wall using only specific handholds and footholds. These handholds and, foot, these handholds and footholds make up what's known as a route. Now, when you walk into a climbing gym, there are going to be a ton of different routes and they're gonna be color coded usually by the color of the holds. So if I start a route that has purple holds, that means I can only use those purple holds until I get to the top of that route. And in that way, the gyms can kind of make certain routes different difficulty. And the difficulty of the route is gonna be denoted by a number system, depending on whether or not it's a top rope or a boulder problem. So those are two different kinds of climbing. So a top rope problem is one where you tie yourself into a rope and then you have your partner, what's known as belay you, up to the top. They're usually longer and they're kind of more what we refer to as static. So there's not as much jumping around. Top row problems are graded on a scale that denotes five point and then a number. So the higher that number is, the more difficult the route is. So for example, a really easy route will be graded like a 5.5. So if you're, if, if, so if it's your first time climbing, you can feel pretty comfortable that you'll be able to climb 5.5 all the way up to, I would probably say 5.7 or 5.8 in the gym. And then once you get past that, the grades are 5.9, 5.10, all the way to 5.12 or maybe even 13. Those are really hard grades um, that kind of more experienced people climb. But yeah, if you're a first timer going top rope, probably in that 5.5 to 5.7 range is where you want to be climbing. Now, bouldering is the other activity that you'll most likely do inside of a gym. Um, bouldering is a lot more dynamic, the walls are shorter and there's mats to catch you if you fall so you don't need a rope or anything. Because of this, bouldering usually has like a lot of bigger moves, you're jumping between holes, you're doing all this crazy stuff. Bouldering is graded on a V system, so it's the, the letter V and then a number, so you have V1, V2, V3. And again, for beginners, I would kind of expect between that V1 to V3 range to be where you're going to be able to go bouldering. So. As soon as you walk into the gym, you're going to see a bunch of different routes. There's going to be bouldering routes and top rope routes. Those are kind of the difficulties that I would assume you, you're going to want to be climbing in if this is your first time going climbing. Now, whether you're top roping or bouldering, there's obviously a lot of moving around that's involved. You have to do pretty athletic movements and you're likely going to be working hard. This is basically a workout. So I think one of the common questions for people going climbing is what do they wear? You know, you want the right clothes, but you also don't want to kind of stick out and have people be able to look at you and say like, oh, that guy's never gone here before. So I actually just have over here is my climbing bag. And this is what I wear when I'm climbing in the gym. So this you can see is just a shirt. I like the no sleeves because it's just, it's more comfortable. I find it doesn't restrict my movement and it's cooler. And then here I have a pair of really stretchy jeans so, you know, I wouldn't boulder or I wouldn't climb in the jeans that I'm currently wearing just because they're not that stretchy and they're going to restrict my movement. So overall, I wouldn't actually recommend jeans for climbing, but these ones are really stretchy and they're pretty light. And that's what you want in a climbing pant. You want something that allows you a full range of motion so that they're not kind of constricting you when you're trying to do these movements while you're climbing. The other really big thing for climbing is shoes. So you need the right pair of shoes because they help you hold on to these tiny little footholds. Now there are specific shoes built for climbing. This is a climbing shoe. And as you can see, it's kind of like a ballet slipper and it comes to a really fine point here. And that point is what allows you to grip on small footholds and you can kind of just like grip on edges and it presses down a lot better than like a running shoe or a flat wheel. 
Now, most gyms, you can rent climbing shoes if you want for like $7 for the day. Um, you know, that can be a pretty good option if you don't have a pair. The other option is just to bring a pair of shoes that you have. I know a lot of first time people will climb in running shoes. And if it's your first time, it's totally okay to just bring an old pair of shoes and climb in them. Like no one's gonna single you out for. Basically every time I go to the climbing gym, there's at least one person in there who you can tell it's their first time. No one really cares. Everyone's just happy that they're having fun. So if you wanna wear your own pair of shoes, feel free. One thing I would say is most people's instinct is to wear running shoes, but some kind of flat or like a van actually works better because the, the edge of the shoe has more of a toe on it and that toe lets you really stand on small footholds. So if you don't wanna rent a pair of climbing shoes, just bring your own, but go with like a Vans or kind of something similar over a pair of running shoes. And the other question that I think a lot of beginners have is what they need to bring to the climbing gym. You know, if it's your first time, you actually don't have to bring that much. Um, again, I have my climbing bag here and it's pretty full of equipment, but the, the three things I would really recommend is you're gonna want some water. So you can see I've just got a water bottle there. The Nalgene really helps you fit in at the climbing gym. Um, I've got some chalk. Now chalk, you, most gyms don't rent chalk, so you need to bring your own. If you have a more experienced partner going with you, it's kind of etiquette that they'll bring some chalk for you, so maybe just bother them about that. Or you can buy bags of chalk for like $10, but I would really recommend chalk, because if you don't use it, you can kind of make the holds greasy, and that makes it harder for everyone to climb. So I would recommend chalk. And then the other thing, I'm not going to dig it out, but Kicking around at the bottom of my bag, I always have some snacks. I'll have like some granola bars and stuff. So bringing food along with you is pretty important. Um, so, you know, if it's your first time and you don't have any of the equipment, you don't really need that much except for the clothing, some water, maybe some chalk, some food. If you want like a drawstring bag or something to carry all your stuff around with you, that can also be a good idea because you don't want your keys and your phone in your pocket when you're climbing because they can get in the way. So just having a little bag that you can throw them in so you don't have to leave them in the changing room or whatever, that can be good as well. So now I thought it would be good to talk about what it's actually like when you go to the climbing gym. So you know, you've got your clothes. If you're a guy, you've got maybe some stretchy jeans or a pair of sweatpants. If you're a girl, leggings work super well. You've got your water bottle, you've bugged your friend to bring you some chalk, and now you actually have to walk into the climbing gym and you really don't have any idea what's going on. So I thought I would go over that. So basically in every climbing gym, when you walk through the door, there's gonna be a desk there. There's gonna be someone at the desk. That's just kind of one of the staff that the attendants, they're like the, you know, they're making sure that people can't just walk in without paying. So if it's your first time climbing, you're gonna walk up to them. You're probably gonna to wanna to buy a day pass, which is just like, it lets you climb at the gym for that one day. They're gonna ask you if you've ever climbed there before. If it's your first time, you're gonna say no. And they'll probably take down some personal information and maybe a picture of you. There's a waiver, so every gym will have a waiver that you need to sign. They'll have you go through the waiver. If you wanna save some time, you can usually do the waiver online beforehand, so you don't have to do it once you get there. Then, once you've signed the waiver, they're probably gonna give you an orientation of the gym. This is where they kind of just walk you around, they show you where all the different areas are, and they also tell you some of the gym rules. So this can be super useful. It usually lasts about 10 to 20 minutes, they show you the bouldering area, they make sure you know how to take a fall, just kind of quick little stuff like that. So just go along with the staff, kind of whatever they say, listen to the rules, that's fairly normal. And then after that, they'll usually ask you if you wanna rent any gear. And that, this is kind of when you can rent a pair of shoes if you want, and also a harness. So this is a climbing harness, and it basically just goes around your waist and your legs like that. And it's what you need if you want a top rope because it allows you to tie yourself into the rope. So it attaches the rope to your body and catches you if you fall. So this is something you kind of need to decide beforehand. If you just wanna do bouldering, you don't need a harness. If you want a top rope, you do need a harness. Now, the important thing to note here is that if you want a top rope, someone in your group has to know how to belay. So belaying is like, when I tie myself into a rope to climb, there's someone else tied into the same rope, but on the opposite side, who's catching me if I fall. And there are certain techniques you need to use to properly belay. If no one in your group knows how to belay, you really won't be able to top rope. And so you might as well save the money, not rent the harness and just go bouldering. So they'll ask you what gear you wanna rent. You can kind of decide for yourself. 
you know, if it's your first time, you might just want to stick to bouldering. Honestly, you'll get to climb more and it's kind of, I think a lot of people find it more fun. It's more engaging. You don't have to worry about tying yourself in. And then after that, you can kind of just go around and explore the gym. And then finally, guys, I thought it would be good just to talk about a little bit of kind of gym etiquette. And, you know, there's a lot of languages and little rules in climbing that you should know about. So the big thing is when someone's on the wall, you want to make sure that you're not interfering with them in any way. So if someone's on a top rope wall, don't walk between the belayer and the wall because someone like the climber, if they fall, they might fall on you. So that's a big one. If someone's bouldering, don't walk beneath them. So because they might fall on you. If you're in the bouldering area, again, you're going to see that there are these really big mats. Don't stand on the mats unless you're kind of walking to go bouldering. When you're just resting or talking to your friends, it's best to step back off of the mats so you're out of everyone's way. So you're out of everyone's way. If you want to climb a route, it's probably best to just check to either side to make sure that the top of your route isn't in anyone's way. So, you know, sometimes route goes sometimes routes go straight up, but sometimes they also go sideways in what we call a traverse. So before I climb a route, I like to just do a quick scan and kind of make sure that when I get two thirds of the way up the route, I'm not going to be interfering with someone who's already climbing. So it's basically just whoever's on the wall first has the right of way. You have to make sure to stay out of their way. Finally, there's kind of a complete different language that surrounds climbing. I'm not going to go over all of the terms here, but there are a few that I think will be useful to know if it's your first time climbing. So a jug is a really good handhold. That just means it's something that you can hold on to pretty easily. So if you're climbing a route, you want to try to get as many jugs as you can because they'll make the route easier to climb. Beta is like the moves or the techniques that you should use to get up a certain route. So if I'm on a route and I can't get to the top, like I don't know what sequence of moves will get me there, I can ask someone else for kind of the beta on it. I can just say like, you know, how do you do this route? And they'll probably show me, they'll say like, oh, you need to put your foot high before you go up to that handhold. That's kind of the beta. So if you're with someone and they give you some beta or you need some beta, that's a pretty useful word to know. A crimp is kind of the opposite of a jug. It's a really small hold. So no one really likes crimps because they're kind of tiny and you need to grab on them really hard. They're hard on your fingers. So if someone says a hold is really crimpy, that probably just means that it's going to be bad. If someone says send, that means to finish a route. So if I sent something, that means like, yeah, I did the route. I sent it. Like it, it, you can also say it goes or it went. They're all pretty similar. Sandbagged means a route is more difficult than it looks. So if I walk up to a bouldering route and it says V2 on it, I might think that's pretty easy. And then I go on it and I fall off three times to kind of cure my own ego because I should be able to climb V2. I'm going to say that that route is sandbagged. So if you're trying a route and you can't get it and someone tells you it's sandbagged, that basically just means you don't need to feel too bad about yourself because it's a really hard route. All right, guys, that's everything. We've covered the language, what to do when you walk in, what to expect, what to wear. I hope this video was helpful. I hope you maybe learned something or it helped you get a little more comfortable for your first time climbing. Most of all, I would say just don't stress. New people go climbing all the time. People at gyms are super friendly. They're always willing to help out and answer any questions that you might have. So don't worry, and if you have a question while you're there, don't be afraid to just go up and ask someone. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you next time.